forever and ever. Well, who can deny such power to another one? No one, of course. We can't deny it to anybody. That's strictly up to the Lord. Who can bestow it on another one? No one, of course. That's also strictly up to the Lord. It's his priesthood. It's his power. We like to think that the church is divided into those who have it and those who don't have it. But it is the purest folly to assume that we can tell who has it and who doesn't. God alone knows who is righteous and how righteous. Yet, the rights of the priesthood are inseparably connected with the powers of heaven. And those cannot be controlled. In fact, the powers of heaven can't even be handled only upon the principles of righteousness. DNC 121, 35, following. Well, what's the result? It's rather obvious, isn't it? There, if there is anyone who really holds the priesthood, no one is in a position to say who it is, incidentally. Only by the power to command the spirits and the elements is such a gift apparent. But as far as commanding or directing other people, there every man must decide for himself. Well, one valuable hint the Lord has given us, however, is the assurance that all those who do hold the priesthood, almost none of them actually possess it. Do you get this? This is a very interesting subtlety. Of those who do hold it, there's not a lot that possess it. The rights of the priesthood may be conferred on us, of course. This makes us formally priesthood holders, but when we ourselves, because of this right, undertake to exercise control or dominion or compulsion upon the souls of the children of man in any degree of unrighteousness. And of course, the Lord knows that degree, then the priesthood is void. And this is how it is in almost all cases in the church. We've learned by sad experience that it is the nature and the disposition of almost all men. This doesn't say some, it says almost all men. As soon as they get a little authority, as they suppose, they will immediately begin to exercise unrighteous dominion. Hence, many are called, but few are chosen. DNC 121, 39, and 40. Well, what does one have to do with the be chosen? <laughs> First, one may not set one's heart upon the things of this world. Well, so much for the priesthood is something to show off. <laughs> one may not aspire to the honors of men. Oh, great. Well, so much for the priesthood is something for prestige. One cannot exercise any power of the priesthood in any degree of unrighteousness. This in full recognition of the fact that it is the nature of almost all men to do that very thing as soon as they think they have the priesthood and the power and the authority. Well, this leaves a few humble, unpretentious, and unworldly people as the sole holders of a valid priesthood. And it is to the few humble followers of Christ who are the strength of the church throughout much of the Book of Mormon history. What irony! Imagine this. As far as the whole world is concerned, the priesthood is a thing of value which is cruel to withhold from anyone because it enhances our status and dignity among our fellow humans. Now, whether us inside the church or outside, we have the priesthood, you see. This status symbol thing is all wrong. It's the entire wrong approach to take. And yet, the one thing that renders that priesthood completely null and void is to treat it as something to aspire to among one's fellows. Priesthood is strictly an arrangement between the individual priesthood holder and his brethren in the eternal worlds. And that, that makes this thing just as private and personal as anything can be. We might as well recognize the fact that whatever we say and do in righteousness is going to be misinterpreted, but of course, it always happens that way. The only way we can make things easier for ourselves in the world is to go the way of the world. So it would be hard to deny that the, the peace and the prosperity of the church in the past years has been largely the fruit of willingness 
to go the way the world goes, of course, where all truth is encompassed in one great whole, to raise one question is to raise many others, and any issue relevant to the gospel inevitably leads to a discussion of the whole shebang. Is not the priesthood everything? Not on this earth. On this earth it is nothing. And as soon as we try to use it for any kind of a status, or for power, or ruling others, or authority, it automatically cancels out. To repeat, as we are prone to do for lack of wit, for those who hold the priesthood on this earth, it is, the prophet Joseph Smith said, an onerous burden. It's not a prize. One cannot give orders to another by the priesthood. One cannot use it to acquire prestige, fame, or wealth. Far from impressing one's fellow men, it is held in derision by them. The moment one tries to make honor or glory, or to exercise dominion by the priesthood, a man to the priesthood of that man, it automatically becomes null and void. Well, what good is it then? What's the point of it? Over whom does it exercise dominion then? Over the spirits and over the elements, but not over one's fellow men, who cannot under any circumstances be deprived of their complete free agency. Though some may find it hard to believe, I find no cause for boasting in my priesthood. Nothing is easier than conferring it upon me, <laughs> but that's only the beginning. And, for it to be a real power, requires a degree of concentration, uh, dedication, and self-discipline, and very few can attain to this. And for the real priesthood is not a blessing, but a terrible risk. The priesthood is not a badge of office to be worn as a feather in a cap, and we virtually see this everywhere, unfortunately, in our day and age. Do we really believe the first vision? Thousands of Latter-day Saints attest to it every fast Sunday, but when the earliest, fullest, and best account of the first vision, dictated by the prophet at the age of 26 to Frederick G. Williams, was discovered and published in 1968, it caused not the slightest ripple of interest in the church. It's enough, apparently, to know that God has spoken again from the heavens, never mind what he said. The most useful lesson in the silence of heaven on this particular issue, in the light of our own woeful ignorance, there is a connection between the two here, and this is it, where the people